today. You know, drug testing procedures. Uh, the, still, the IBF champion of the world. Please uh, crack on with your questions, please. I have a question. James, congratulations, first of all. Uh, were you surprised by... Uh was so aggressive towards you. Were you surprised by that? Uh, a little bit, but uh, I never looked up. I never overlooked him. I knew he was going to be good, but uh, I'm just confident in my ability, and I know where I'm going. And I knew I was going to beat him, but just didn't know how I was going to. But listen, he's he's, he's brave. He showed a lot of heart, and he dug in. He's a good fighter. Listen, he was a champion for a long, long time, and he had nine or ten defenses. So you've got to give him credit. But most importantly, give me credit for dealing with him like that. How do you feel? I feel good. I feel real good. Um, in some of the rounds, could have, uh, once again, Eddie and my coach Jim always go on about, I take my foot off the gas. I've got to stop doing that. I've got to stop doing it. But it's because I just go and cruise control. It's stupid. But I'm going to work on that. And next time it ain't going to happen. I said that last fight. But I really mean it next time. I'm not going to let that happen. Yeah. They thought the um, scorecards were a bit wide. What did you think? No. Do you know what? I looked outside the ring after the 12th round when it was done. I looked at Eddie and I went, I won that, innit? And he went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we pulled all <laughs> face. But I think he was, I mean, everyone was just worried because uh, he was obviously over here and everything he was throwing, some of his punches weren't even hitting me. I think my defence was good, the movement was good. It wasn't even hitting me. Uh, but because the home crowd and that, some of the rounds probably looked a lot closer. The but cut. the judges had it perfect, they were there, they were sitting so close, four or five rounds, damn me out. The cut came quite early, same as the mm. Durrell fight, but it didn't seem to bother you as much as it did in Boston. No, it was bothering more this time than was the it? Durrell fight, yeah. Because the best thing kept the gun on my eyes and I couldn't see probably, but see, that's a good 12 rounds against a good opponent. I'm pleased with that, but I'm only going to get better. I've beaten two quality, elite, world-class opponents in my last two fights. Come on, man, give me credit. And this time, I've gone, <laughs> I've gone overseas and done it. As I said, I'm a road warrior. Next, next, hopefully, next one's in Vegas. Against Badu Jack, we the title, so we'll see. You don't want to waste any time. I don't want to waste any time. I'm peaking now. In the next three or four years, I'm going to peak. This is where I'm going to be at my best and my strongest, so... Let's get the big fights in. Would you not consider a rematch with Richard Mute with what he gave you tonight? There's no point. A rematch where? Over here again? There's just no point. No, no. no, no. in England, maybe. No? He don't like travelling. <laughs> come on, he don't like travelling. He don't want to come to England. If, it, if it listen, if it if it made sense, if people wanted to see it, why not? As I say, I'm willing to fight anyone, but that don't make sense. James, it's nice to have a British double tonight with Tyson's victory. Fantastic, we are flying, the Brits are flying. Tyson Fury pulled off the uh, upset and beat Vladimir Klitschko. So, yeah, we're flying, man. You watch that, you get a chance to watch I that? I did, I watched it, he actually inspired me and gave me an extra push, you know, seriously. When I heard he won, uh, I actually streamed it. I don't know if I can say that, but I streamed <laughs> it and watched it as my beat. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, he did, I did. But uh, yeah, I streamed it, yeah, and uh, yeah, you give me that extra push. You know, you've known you've known each other since you were teenagers, is it? Mm, yeah, I boxed England versus America with him. I've known him for a while. Obviously, we're not best friends, but I've been in the squad with him. And I know him, so and listen, he he proved a lot of doubters and he is wrong as well. So uh, yeah, done well. The whole week you were uh, saying you were looking for a win, mm. a great performance. Do you consider having a Done that I think so. Yeah. I think I put on a great performance. Uh, I made it. I made it a competitive fight. I made it a good, exciting fight. It's all down to me. You know what I'm saying I could really have been a bit boring and moved and boxed him. I could have stayed in the pocket. That's where I'm. That that's that's where I'm at my best. When I'm in the pocket, ducking shots through the middle, up through and all that. So yeah. You took you took some risks. Today did I take some risks? I was just flowing. Come on, man. I was just flowing. Just, as I say, some some of the rounds in the mid rounds, I cruise, but I've got to stop. But did I take a risk? I don't know. What do you think? Was it a good fight? Was it? What did I look like? Did I look good? Was it very very good. Very yeah. Good. But that's the main thing. If everyone's happy and we've got good twelve exciting rounds, that's all that matters. You think that the American TV likes you now? Mm. Call you back. Mm. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> they love me. Showtime. 
But that, that was one of your main goals, I guess, coming here. Of course, listen, I remember growing up watching Prince Nazim on HBO. It was on HBO, and then going to Madison Square Garden and boxing all American fighters and defending these titles. I remember I was only like 13, 14, and I looked at that and thought, one day I'm going to do that. And that's what's happening right now. The first time you hit the new gym, did you see something in it? Did you die? Oh, do you know what he showed? As I say, he showed a lot of heart, and he showed that he's still got it. If I'm being honest, like he can mix it at the top, top level. So uh, when I hit him, uh, now he just showed heart. Really, I've got to give him respect. And he, did he hurt you with any moment in the fight? Nah, not nah, nah, not seriously. Maybe a little buzz here and there, or a little flash. Don't know if you've ever been hit before, but that's what happens. <laughs> but nothing, but nothing, nothing too major. And do you think you have a future in the, in the um, sport? Um, yeah, of course. Got a couple of years left, I think. Let's like say he's been twelve rounds with me, and he he fought well. He made it competitive, and he was in the fight. So uh, why not? Definitely. He's big over it. He sells over it, man. He's good. He's a good fighter, man. He's quality. No, nah. Andre Durrell. Mm. He's the second best. Second best in the world. Me, him. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> James, you talk about being the, the road warrior and fighting over this side of the Atlantic. What is it that appeals to you about coming here rather than London? No, I love London. And I'm, I don't know if my next fight's going to be in London, but I'm just saying I just love the fact I've always dreamt of being in America and fighting in America, fighting in New York, Vegas and all that. That's 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 a fighter's dream. And I remember watching, as I said before, watching Nazim Hamid and fighters like that come over here and this is where it's at in it really. Like you do your thing in England, I want to box in England, I want a home I want a homecoming in London, but to box out in America on Showtime and whatever is, is, is the dream come true, really. How are you going to celebrate? You've got some holidays I've got, I've got a little uh, holiday booked. I'm going to Jamaica on the 28th with the family for a couple of weeks and then I'm back at it. I'm ready to go whenever. I'm going to speak to Al and Eddie and I'm back quick, like, whenever. But we have to speak to him. What sort of date next year? Like Springs? April probably. I have to see what kind of fight it is and who I box. So I'm going to have to sit down and speak to my team. We had a conversation after the last fight and I'd like to see James shave his hair off. But basically, I love Marvin Agar and so does James. And I remember when Hacker was at his best, no one wanted to fight him. He was just so good, it was unbelievable. He had three big strikes against him at the time, which I explained to James. And basically, he took an attitude of preparing like a challenger because Hagler was avoided for years, like James would have been if he didn't win his managed uh, fight against Gonzalez. So he got his shot through merit, and when he got his shot, he took it with both hands in the lion's den. He's done everything the hard way from winning the Olympic gold in Seoul to beating Paul Smith in Liverpool in only his like, seventh or ninth professional fight, going out to America to box, who I think is the best superman in the world, barring himself. Uh, which James has said as well, Darrell, I think he's absolutely outstanding. So, yeah, and with James now, it's a point of using someone like Hagler as an example, because from here he's got to start, I haven't said it to him yet, but he's got to start even going deeper into his training, taking more things in more serious, getting his camps more on board, and he'll just get better and better. And in that fight he showed a lot of maturity. Um, I'm not reiterating what he said, but, you know, Lou Booty was a five-year world champion, and, you know, he come in tonight on home territory and when it's last bar saloon, you raise your game by 10% because I've been in that saloon and you do, you, you get in. So, but it's never going to be an easy fight for no one. And um, for James, I've apparently come across really well on the TV back home and in the States. So I think he's done himself proud and I'm, I'm sure he won't watch the fight. will say that, you know, it was a good performance and it'll only get better. There is improvements to be made and I can see some myself already which it's not the time to talk about him, but James is going to get better about him. And tonight I was really, really pleased with him. Jim, James said earlier in the week that he wants to become the best British boxer of all time. Can he do that? How does he do that? Well, you know what? He might be that already, because if you're looking at the people around him, 
he's, he has, he's the only person to win Olympic gold medal to win a world title. So right now, if his legacy comes with this world title, he started it tonight. I don't know why. Already you could look at him. I mean, I love John Connor, and John Connor is my idol for years. But James definitely could become Britain's best ever. Why not? And he, 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 no, he deserves, five, five, he deserves to mix it in circles. <laughs> no, not yet. But if he, if he goes on his reign now as a world champion and goes like another nine fights and he wins every one of them, which there's no reason why he don't, then, yeah, you could say, you know, he's Britain's best ever fighter. My father, Luciani, I'm very proud of you. Uh, everybody thought this guy was done, and I kept insisting that there's no way he's done. And I'm very très content parce que la soirée, tout le monde regarde la la lutte, la nouvelle Lucian, Lucian, you know. Uh, what can I say? The fight was close. He pushed the fight. The guy was backing up. He was picking his shots here and there. But uh, you know, tomorrow we'll be back. I don't know, maybe a few rounds uh, and we need to, to be more uh, more aggressive in a few rounds. Maybe I waiting too too much. And you know, that is boxing. He hit me, I hit him. That is the the, the boxing. I think he hit the nail on the head. I mean there was sometimes uh could have been a little bit busier. And I think what, you know, when he was pushing the issue, sometimes uh, James was just doing these pop shots, hitting one shot, then he would move, hit one shot, move, you know, but it's very difficult to give a fight to a guy that's moving all the time for for maybe, let's say, eight, nine rounds because he came out aggressive in the first and then in the, in the last round. So, you let's say, he was moving for nine rounds. It's hard to give a guy to, to I don't know, like, like Luchin said, we have to look at the fight and then we could take it from there. We, no, we can't uh, dis, uh, disregard what the judges have done. It's your job, you know. So we're I'm emotionally involved because, you know, we, uh, we train for 10 weeks. So we wait and look at the fight. If we lose on the tape, if we see the fight, then it looks like blue. But it doesn't make sense. 117, 111, you know. Uh, but I think uh, James was just moving and doing these pop shots. Sometimes with it, he would try poke, poke, then he would move and drop his hand and play around. And, now sometimes that that has an effect on the on the judge's eyes that's watching, you know. So, but at the end of the day, Lucian is here and the girl is in the hospital getting stitched. So, who had the more damage? Uh, not this guy. <laughs> Lucian, do you think um, James DeGale is the best super middleweight in the world? <laughs> I don't think. No, he won the he 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 won the fight tonight. I don't think he's the best uh, super middleweight.